My name is Mitra Manesh. I'm a servant. I serve through teaching, coaching, consulting, or any other way that I can find to share what I know with those who want to know. And this Lights On podcast is one of those ways. It was created with consciousness and mindful living in heart. So join us as we travel through many roads of learning and transformation together. And if you enjoy our podcast, please give us feedback by rating us five star and share us with others if you think they may benefit from it. On behalf of my team, I thank you for your presence. The topic of masculine and feminine energy in leadership really became a thing when women stayed in the workplace, entered the workplace, and stayed in the workplace long enough to take charge in some departments and organizations. And then the question was whether masculine or feminine style of leadership is better. In this short episode, I will unfold the true meaning of masculine and feminine and explain how and why we all have a choice to integrate the both and bring a balance to our leadership style. Let's take a listen together. Where I would like to start is to talk about what masculine and feminine energies are, and then we'll go from there. The masculine and feminine energy that I'm referring to has got nothing to do with gender, Because people usually, when I say that, they say, yeah, men and women. And I'm saying, no, it's got nothing to do with gender or the politics of the gender or legality of gender. So put all of that aside and come back to what I'm referring to, which is the energy with which, the disposition with which you lead in your team, in your organization, or within the work that you do, because we are all leaders. We really are. We just don't have the title, all of us. So that's what I'm referring to. And what is interesting to start up with is that you would think, of course, because I was born as a woman, I will have far more um, energetically speaking disposition to lead as a uh, with my feminine energy. But apparently that is not true. I have seen it in action that it's not true. In practicality, that is not true. And also there's been some research uh, the one that I actually uh, looked into was the one that Professor uh, Daphne Joel in um, University of Tel Aviv, Tel Aviv University has done, that um, she studied 1,400, 1,400 men and women and just could not find anything by just studying uh, their brains. So our brains apparently are not really born, made to be one way or another. Very low percentage, I think it was between 0 to 8% that showed as completely masculine or completely feminine or dominantly at least masculine and feminine in in their function. Because as you know, the uh, feminine side works in the right side of the brain and the masculine energy usually have a home in the left side of the brain. So There was no evidence academically, scientifically, that we are dispositioned one way or another. So the question is, where do we get it from? So how do we start um, acting and using our energies, feminine or masculine, to um, lead a certain way, either lead our life or lead our organizations? It seems to me that that's all about the conditioning that our environment gives us. And that's a huge statement I'm making. I'm saying basically you are free to use both your masculine and or feminine and hopefully both of them in a balanced way. There was a time that if, especially when first women went to the positions of power, uh, the criticism of them was "Ah, like she's worse than a man or she leads like a man. First of all, practically speaking, because we didn't have role models as women leaders in organizations, not in tribes, but not, I'm not talking about traditional institutions, but but man-made, literally man-made organizations. So we didn't have role models, first of all. Secondly, that's what was asked of us. So that which was a criticism 
right now, as we look at it scientifically, we see that it's actually a strength. If I, as a woman, ha- am able to have a masculine side and have some attributes and energies that lead you know, my decisions, my actions that are of masculine nature, it's actually a good thing. But there is a PS that I have to add here. It's only helpful if I'm not doing this at the price of my feminine energy, but in addition to it. It's a major statement and major difference between it, meaning I hold on, I keep the feminine energies that are helpful in in my work and in my leadership work, and I add to them the masculine learned energies and behaviors and traits and um uh, actions that one might take as a dominantly masculine person. So that is the key, the balance of two. I call it the nurture and the nature, whatever and we think nature is, but, but that nature is actually the nurture. But all right, we had 8% of people showing that they had dominantly masculine or feminine. Sure. But a lot of it, as you can see, is nurture. What do we do with what ever dispositions we have even with whatever experiences and historical cultural backgrounds that we come from if you're interested to explore this topic and all other aspects of uh, emotional intelligence and mindfulness at workplace please go to mitramanesh.com and search the word emotional intelligence and mindfulness in leadership at work if it's uh, before we offer it live virtually you can register and join us and if not you can access it when it's videotaped and is available and offered in our store hope to see you in the class and hope that i have been able to serve you Hope this episode answered the question or two for you or provoked and inspired questions in you. I'm so grateful you showed up and listened up. Until the next time, be well and stay curious.